Hey, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Today's video is gonna be about installing a charge controller between my rooftop panel and the battery on my teardrop. Now this is gonna keep me topped off when I'm off-grid camping. It'll work like a trickle charger when my camper is in storage. It even contributes to my charge when I'm driving down the road. As long as the sun is shining, my battery is being charged. So there's a lot to cover today. Let's get into this. So the way we're gonna be running this system is by running the wires down the face of the camper. I use wire loom and I use little adhesive pads to strap this wire to the face of the camper. It comes up and underneath to this cheap battery box. This is just like an ammo can that I got on Amazon. When I open this up, my charge controller is inside. I have a little tray that pulls the system out if I need to uh, work on it or swap out components. Everything is fused and has a simple plug on it. I can unplug the solar and there's an extension cord here to run to a portable power station. So this sort of versatility just gives me the most for my money and it's why I want this system to operate this way. So there's 101 ways that we can do this job. And the best way is the way that's gonna meet or exceed your needs for the least amount of money. So I'm gonna point out a couple different variations as I go, and I'm gonna demonstrate how I'm doing my system and why I'm doing it that way. Now, before we get started, we have to get the right gear. There's a few options out there, so let's do a quick overview of that. Now, choosing the right gear here is gonna be key. I'm gonna be going with a 20 amp charge controller. That's what's sized and with some headroom for the 180 watt panel that I'm using. If I had a 100 watt panel, I'd go with a 10 amp charge controller. I discuss this stuff and more in the Solar 101 video, so check that out if you wanna figure out how to size your charge controller. Next, we have to choose between the two different types of technology that are available. It might surprise some people that I'm gonna be going with a PWM charge controller. This is actually going to give me the most performance for the money that I'm spending on this job, and I'll explain why. But for a quick overview, a PWM charge controller will provide a multi-stage charge to the battery, and most importantly, it steps itself down to a trickle charge when the battery is full. An MPPT charge controller or a maximum power point tracking controller is usually the better option. They cost a little bit more money, but they deliver a more efficient charge to the battery. In most cases, when you don't have to consider installation methods, an MPPT will pay for itself. It's a good upgrade. This is a big one that I had on the shelf. They actually make ones that look just like the smaller PWM. So don't let the appearance deceive you. But there's one difference here besides the cost that is actually going to lead to me using the PWM. PWMs come with a wide variety of waterproof options. They're sealed off on the back with a high IP rating. This is much more difficult to find with MPPTs. The few that are on the market can cost over three times as much as a PWM. So if we don't have one of those models, we have to consider using a high quality tongue box or drilling your wires inside the camper to install that MPPT in an interior environment. We have to consider those added expenses of installation when we're making our decision. So the last thing worth noting here before we move on, the performance benefits of the MPPT that you might have read about. Those are highlighted with larger solar arrays, panels that are wired in series to work with higher voltage because these devices can convert voltage. When you're talking about smaller panels under 200 watts with 100 amp hours of battery storage, the performance of these two charge controllers is much closer. So it doesn't warrant the extra expense here. I'm actually saving enough money with this waterproof charge controller that cost me under $50 to be able to buy another portable panel. That portable panel, when hooked with my rooftop, is gonna give me much better performance than going with the MPPT. I'm actually doing it for less money. So now that I have my charge controller selected, let's figure out where we're gonna install this. 
Some people actually screw this right to the panel. They use it like those all-in-one kits. You can simply run a wire down, connect it to your battery, and you're in business. You're not gonna beat that as far as ease of installation, but I don't prefer it because I like to read the information on the charge controller. It tells you state of charge and how much current is going into the battery from the panel. So I like to move this down where I can read it. With these waterproof controllers, some people actually attach it to the face of the camper near the battery. You can screw it in in a watertight way. You can actually use VHB tape for a permanent installation here. This is also a really easy way to install this. There's three separate ways here that you can connect to the battery and they're all fast and easy to do. Now the first is just running your battery wires down with ring terminals. There's a positive and negative on the back of your charge controller and those wires are gonna go down and attach to your battery. The second way is some people use an SAE wire and just bring it over to the solar on the side. You get your polarity right and that's a great easy way to do this. I don't like that way when you're driving down the road. The wind and the vibration is actually shaking that plug while you're charging. But it's good to use at home and it's good to plug in once you get to camp. Now the third way, I don't see used too often, but it's really nice. You can drop a wire down to a splice block that's very common on the front of these campers. This Bushwhacker has one. That's where the positive to your battery goes. There's a connection to your converter inside. You're even gonna have a plug there where your seven pin comes in from your tow vehicle. It's easy enough to just put your red wire, your positive wire on that block. You can ground this out the same way your battery is ground. There's going to be a connection to the chassis there. That way you can avoid extra wires going to the top of your battery and avoid issues like corrosion that happens when your battery off gases. Now although those ways are easy, I prefer installing my charge controller in this cheap little box. You can get them at Harbor Freight. I got this one on Amazon for like 10 or 12 bucks. Now I do a couple cable entries in here, but it's not necessary. Since the charge controller is waterproof, I'm going to mount this box in front of my battery box. I'm going to make that connection to the battery into this and the connection from the solar panel. This keeps the mud, the snow, the ice off the charge controller, makes it easy to read, and it gives me some extra modifications here to be able to use this with a portable power station. So for this first step, I used the Bouge RV extension cables. They go to MC4s, they plug right into the solar panel. It's 10 gauge copper, it's not CCA, watertight stuff. You can save money by making these yourself, but this is a really convenient way to start. Now I use zip ties to just bond everything together and kind of mock it up where it's gonna go. This works better when you let it sit out in the sun for a little bit because it lays down better. This little loop at the top here is called a service loop. It allows my panel to tilt, but it's also gonna allow me to repair those plugs in the future if I have to swap something out. Now I keep it away from this side. I could have come down the middle, but I have a little storage container that goes here. So coming down over here keeps it away from this seam. This is a service item. I have to be able to repair these seams. So it might look better over here, but in the long run, this is gonna be the better place to do it. Moving on to the battery connection, we're gonna start with this iGreely plug. I'll put it in my description. I've used these a bunch of times before on the channel. It's 10 gauge wire. It goes to an SAE plug. It connects to the battery really easy, and there's a nice high quality fuse holder. They come with a couple options of fuses. I'm going to be using a 30 amp fuse. It's 10 gauge wire. That's gonna protect the battery against shorts or damage, but it's also not gonna limit the potential of that charge controller. So you could go with a 25 or a 30, either one will work fine. Next I go with this little SAE extension cord. It's three feet long. This will be in the description as well. You plug it in red to red and black to black and now you have a fused connection to your battery and enough running cord here to be able to get into our box for the charge controller. It's fused and everything is plug and play. So I installed this iGreely, put a little zip tie on it. The fuse is easy to access. It's easy to unplug the SAE inside the battery box. And I'm draping this out the side so when the top goes on, everything is sealed up. 
Okay, cover is on, SAE is coming out the side. You can see where I stick that out the side of this box. Everything is sealed up now. You can keep this cover on while you're working or if you wanna be careful, you can pop the fuse out temporarily for this SAE because we're now gonna enter this and the wire from the solar panel into this box that we're working with. Now it's time to install this box. So you don't have to worry about some high quality Pelican box. I go with something very cheap. I did install a couple cable glands here. I had them on a shelf. Some people just cut a big hole in the bottom of the box. That's fine. We have a waterproof controller. So you can drill a hole through the bottom of your box in case the water comes in, it can drain out. It's very similar to a battery box. Now to make my job easier, I put a little piece of wood here, screwed it down on the platform, and I'm actually gonna screw this box into that piece of wood. Just a couple screws down into that painted piece of wood, and we're ready for the next step here. So now I've run both my wires from the battery and my wires from the panel inside this box. I leave them long for now. Now if you come over here, you could see that I used my watertight entries, but like I said, you don't have to. You could just cut a hole in the box. But now we're ready to cover things in wire loom. To dress this exposed wire up, we're gonna use this little split wire loom comes in a spool like this, it's very inexpensive. It's UV protected and if we take our time, it looks a lot nicer when the job is done. I'm gonna use some zip ties to tighten up that wire loom. I can use electric tape as well. And one of my favorite parts of the job is using these little 3M zip ties. I'm gonna include this in the description. They have a nice adhesive that you can stick to the face of the camper. I like to prep it with a little rubbing alcohol and a tiny rag. Once that alcohol dries, these stick on and it makes for a much cleaner job. It lasts longer too. Okay, so we have everything dressed up and looking good. We can now wire our charge controller and get ready to install it in the box. In the box, I have an SAE plug from the extension plug from the battery. So I'm gonna install a corresponding SAE plug on the battery section of my charge controller. I use little fork connectors to go into the charge controller and line up that SAE so that the polarity, the red and black, line up with the feed from the battery. On the panel side, you'll see that I attached two MC4 connectors. If you don't wanna make these yourself, you can actually buy a short cable and just cut it in half. You're gonna put four connectors into your charge controller, but what we're gonna have here is a charge controller that can unplug. This gives us a lot more capability. Of course, I could just run these wires into the back of the charge controller and it would work. But you're going to see why this plug and play gives me so many more options. So now is the exciting part. I plug in the SAE to make a connection to the battery. I'm now seeing readings on my charge controller. I can go to the selection and choose sealed battery because I'm using an AGM. You could use this with a lithium, a flooded battery. Those options are there and there's plenty of videos and instructions on the particular charge controller that you're using. Now, since I have the MC4 connectors connected to the end of my solar panel, I'm ready to do the final installation of this. If uh, you've never done MC4 connectors, there's a ton of videos on YouTube that show how to do this. It just takes a minute. I am going to use this Bouge RV inline fuse. It's really easy to swap. It's 30 amps. It just plugs into the positive side clicks in place, and now I'm ready to connect to my charge controller. So my battery is fused and my solar panel is fused. It's a good idea, best practice, to always plug in your battery first and maybe throw a blanket or turn your panel into the shade. It just is a safer job to connect it when you're not in direct sunlight. So I am going to connect my panel. Everything clicks in place and we're good to go. 
Okay, great. We're getting a charge and it's even cloudy out right now. It's going to tell me the voltage off the panel, the voltage off the battery, the state of charge. There's plenty of things to see here. There's one final connection on these charge controllers. It's for temperature compensation. That sensor that comes with mine only costs $10. I run the wire through and you can even drop the probe in the battery box or tape it to the top. It allows your charge controller to make fine adjustments based on air temperature that makes your battery last longer. For $10, it's gonna pay for itself. So now that everything's ready to go, I'm gonna show you the final way that I install this in the box to keep it easy. So the finishing touches for me is I take this little block of wood, I screw two pieces together, I painted mine. This is a completely optional step. This will slide in the box and hold the charge controller steady. It won't rattle around in the box. I put this hole here as a thumb holder so I can slide this out of the box. The wires are just gonna tuck neatly inside. So for 99% of the time that this is gonna be operating, it's gonna be operating in this box like this. If I open the top, even with the wires coiled up, I can easily see the amount of wattage, the amount of power going into the battery, the current, the voltage, state of charge. It's really easy to monitor. But if I wanna pull this out, you wanna make sure that you train your wires pretty well. The, tra the tray comes out and the wires come out, I try to swirl them or loop them instead of doing fan folds. It looks a little ugly, but you'll get the hang of it. So my favorite part of this setup is a lot of times when the conditions are good, I'm topped off before lunchtime. That means I can unplug this solar panel and plug it into my portable power station. Now, a lot of portable power stations take MC4s. If not, there's a variety of adapters on the market. You'll be able to plug into any portable power station that's made. Now, even with the panel, in the horizontal position and these overcast skies, I'm getting over 50 watts into the battery. This will shoot up to as much as 150 watts with the MPPT that's in here. That way I get the most value out of this panel when the sun is shining. Okay, everyone, I hope this video helped you out. I know that there's a lot of content to move through. This video was probably quite long. To be honest with you, it probably took me more time to explain this and film it than it did to actually do this job. So send me your feedback in the comments. Let me know if you have a custom way you like to do, or if you've copied this way, I wanna know how it works for you. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.